Hey everyone, my name is Nick, and there have been some questions on this thread about what tree climbers are using these aluminum rings for. So I thought I'd take a few minutes to make this video to show you some of the rings that we're using to make something that tree climbers use while climbing with those rings, and then we're going to come back outside to uh, actually set up a climb and show you the rings in action. So why don't we head upstairs right now and we'll look at the rings. Here are some of the rings that tree climbers are using. First we'll start with this one. It's the rock climbing um, standard rappel ring. You can see it is rolled aluminum. There is a seam right there. And we'll compare that to the tree climbing one. The tree climbing one is a lot thicker uh, with the similar um, dimensions as far as the outside diameter. It's usually used in conjunction with a larger ring that it doesn't fit through. and you can see right here that these two were part of the recall that, is that um, Cheryl issued a while ago. There's the Kong logo on that one, and you can just barely see it on this one. I will not sell these rings. Um, we're going to use them later in the video, and they'll probably get destroyed after that. These are DMM rings. I really like these ones. Um, it's got their logo right there, and they put individual serial numbers on each one, um, as, as well as... Uh, and the full strength rating. Um, they got large and small and you can get them in a variety of sizes and if somebody doesn't want aluminum then I will also um, have steel ones available to them um, and these are a lot heavier but if we can comp compare them side by side the overall dimensions are almost identical. Alright so I'm gonna splice up a ring and ring friction saver and I'll explain what that is later and, and what it's for later. But um, I have in front of me the two Kong rings that you just saw in the previous clip and a piece of the core from half inch Yale Cordage double Esterlon rope. This is a polyester rope. Um, the core alone will have a breaking strength of about 6,000 pounds, so it'll be plenty strong for our demonstration. Um, so give me a few minutes and we'll get started with the demo outside.
All right, so let's take a look at these rings in action. We'll start with the standard rock climbing harness. I'm, I know you guys already know what this looks like, um, but the, the whole thing's made out of nylon, and there is a webbing loop, the belay loop, right in the front, and that's where you tend, um, you either are attaching it next to the belay loop or directly to the nylon belay loop. Um, and this works out really well for rock climbers. But let's compare that to a tree climber's harness. It's a lot heavier of a harness. You can see that the padding on the back is uh, a good eight inches thick from top to bottom. Um, it's thick foam. The leg pads are very, very thick and padded as well. Um, and let's go ahead and put this thing on. Tree climbers spend a ten tend to spend a lot more time um, in their harnesses at any one given point of time. Uh, a regular tree climber could spend you know, easily four hours a day um, in their harness, and a lot of that time could be spent actually hanging on the harness. So it's important for them to have something that is um, not gonna feel like it's digging in and not gonna pull in all the wrong places. So that's why it's so much heavier, uh, so much more robust of a harness. Um, let's go ahead and look at a couple of the rings that are on the harness itself. Um, you can see on this one I have the little ring. It's, it's the exact same ring that you saw before and it's connected to the leg loop and it allows, as I'm moving side to side, um, it allows that ring to rub across the webbing without us having to worry about a lot of abrasion um, on the webbing itself. You so you'll see one on each side and um, in the front you'll notice that rather than a webbing loop, this harness has a webbing, what we call a bridge. And there's an aluminum ring, the large aluminum ring, um, rides on that bridge and it allows for that side to side action. So if I reach over here to cut a branch and my rope, my tie-in point is up there, um, it's not gonna pull my whole body, it's gonna allow me the mobility to reach side to side. Um, so those are just in the harness. We see them in a lot of harnesses that tree climbers are using. Um, another place that we'll see it is on our anchor at the top. The thing that you saw me make just a few minutes ago um, was, it's called a friction saver. And tree climbers don't want the rope, and you guys know this also, you don't want the rope rubbing directly on the tree itself because that'll cause damage to the tree and shorten the life of the tree. So um, rock climbers will tend to uh, put a piece of webbing around the tree put a carabiner through that or some rappel rings and then run, run the rope through that. Um, and tree climbers will use a friction saver. So uh, it'll look like this. There's a large ring on one side, a little ring on the other, and either webbing or in this case rope um, connecting the two. You can see that I have mine pre-rigged onto uh, my throw line and that'll allow me to set it. You'll see that in a minute. But to give you an idea, um, we're gonna pretend that my neck is the branch the friction saver will go around the branch and the two rings come together and then your climbing line goes through the rings. So as you're climbing up and down, the friction is on the rings and not on the branch itself. So let's go ahead and set up a climb.